Hello and welcome to our world news program coming to you live from Algiers and All24 News with me, Karifa Zachary. To the headlines. Ukraine's president has said that he's prepared to discuss the commitment from Ukraine not to seek NATO membership in exchange for a ceasefire, the withdrawal of Russian troops and a guarantee of Ukraine's security. Plus, Ukraine's armed forces said the Russian troops used stun grenades and gunfire to disperse a rally of pro-Ukrainian protesters in the Russian-controlled city of Kherson. Also coming up, U.S. President Joe Biden. Russia's accusations that Kiev has biological and chemical weapons is an attempt by Vladimir Putin to use those weapons in war with Ukraine. And finally, severe drought risks pushing nearly half of Somali children and their five into acute malnutrition this year, with hundreds of thousands needing life-saving treatment according to the United Nations, which called for urgent action. And we begin our news bulletin with the latest live updates. White House insists that the U.S. government had no part in the decision of a large number of Western companies to pull out of the Russian market amid Russia's conflict with Ukraine. The Pentagon says it will help gather evidence of war crimes in Ukraine, accuses Russian forces of indiscriminate attacks. UN Refugee Agency says more than 3.5 million people have fled Ukraine since the beginning of Russia's military operation on February 24. Ukraine's president has said that he is prepared to discuss a commitment from Ukraine not to seek NATO membership in exchange for a ceasefire, the withdrawal of Russian troops and a guarantee of Ukraine's security. Zelensky said that Kiev will be ready to discuss the status of Crimea and the eastern Donbass region held by Russian-backed separatists after a ceasefire and steps towards providing security guarantees. That is why, first of all, a ceasefire should be declared, troops should be withdrawn. Presidents should meet and agree on troop withdrawals and security guarantees. It's possible to find a compromise here. There are NATO countries who want to guarantee our security, but who can't unfortunately guarantee us 100% membership in the alliance. But they are ready to do everything that alliance would normally do if we were a member. I think it's a good compromise. The mayor of Kiev, Vitaly Klitschko, announced that a new curfew will be established in the Ukrainian capital from yesterday evening until Wednesday morning. The curfew will begin at 8 p.m. and will last until 7 a.m. local time on March 23rd. The curfew in Kiev and the region will be tightened again. It will start today at 8 p.m and will last until 7 a.m. on March 23rd. That's it until the day after tomorrow. Shops, pharmacies, gas stations and establishments will not be open tomorrow. Ukraine's armed forces said Russian troops used stun grenades and gunfire to disperse a rally of pro-Ukrainian protesters in the Russian-controlled city of Kherson. Local sources say one person was shot and an ambulance was called, while others are also reported to have been injured, as well as several detained. Nabil Khazini has this report. In Kyrgyzstan, the only Ukrainian city fully controlled by the Russians, Ukrainians gathered to protest the Russian military operation in their city. But this is how it ended. Footage shared on social media showed explosions which were reported to be stun grenades. One person was shot in the leg, while others have been injured. 
Today we also how slaves were shooting up free people. There are slaves who got used to packing everyone in police buses, even grandmothers with empty white banners or girls with A4 sheets of paper bearing the word peace. These images show Ukrainians pushing back trucks which had Z symbols painted on them. Go home, they say. Not far from Kyrsen, less than two kilometers from the front line near Mykolaiv, citizens now hide all day in an underground shelter. They refuse to leave. Here I am at home. I will not leave here. A hotel in the city center was shelled. This woman blames politicians for the current situation. They can't do anything, neither find peace nor agree, so that people stop dying. They can't agree on anything. But waiting for peace to be found, several people are being killed and millions are being displaced. U.S. President Joe Biden said on Monday that Russia's accusations that Kiev has biological and chemical weapons is an attempt by Vladimir Putin to use those weapons in war with Ukraine. However, Joe Biden did not give any concrete evidence to such accusations. He also denied on his behalf that the United States acquire any biological as well as chemical weapons in Europe. And now Putin is back against the wall. He wasn't anticipating the extent or strength of our unity. And the more his back is against the wall, the greater the severity of the tactics he may employ. Now he's talking about new false flags he's setting up, including he's asserting that we, America, have biological as well as chemical weapons in Europe. Simply not true. I guarantee you. They're also suggesting that Ukraine has biological and chemical weapons in Ukraine. Russia says it has summoned the United States ambassador to the country over President Joe Biden's recent comments, labeling his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin a war criminal amid the invasion of Ukraine. Osama Ayadi has more insights. Russia's foreign ministry said on Monday it had summoned U.S. Ambassador John Sullivan to tell him that President Joe Biden's calling Russian President Vladimir Putin a war criminal had pushed bilateral ties to the brink of collapse. The Kremlin earlier described the comments as personal insults against Putin. The ministry also told Sullivan that hostile actions against Russia would receive a decisive and firm response. Such statements from the American president and worthy of statesmen of such high rank put Russian-American relations on the verge of rupture. Biden said last week that Putin was a war criminal for sending tens of thousands of troops to invade Ukraine and targeting civilians. Um, but I will leave it to you to ask the Kremlin uh, what message it was that uh, they may have uh, wished to relay. I can tell you the message that was relayed by Ambassador Sullivan uh, when he met with Russian government officials. Uh, as you know, as a general matter, uh, we don't speak to every single uh, diplomatic communication, but I will say this. Uh, Ambassador Sullivan took advantage of this encounter to demand that the Russian government follow international law and basic human decency for that matter and allow consular access to all U.S. citizen detainees in Russia. State Department spokesman Ned Price confirmed that Sullivan met with Russian officials, but he declined to say whether the U.S. envoy told them that the United States stands behind the accusations Biden leveled at Putin. It's rich to hear a country uh, speak about quote-unquote inappropriate comments uh, when that same country uh, is engaged in mass slaughter, uh, including strikes and attacks that have resulted in civilian lives, uh, strikes and attacks barrages that have leveled civilian cities. Price told the news briefing that the United States believes it is important to maintain communication channels with Russia, especially during times of conflict. Tensions between the U.S. and Russia have been rising amid Russian forces continuing military operation on Ukraine cities and towns, which have drawn global condemnation and complicated efforts to bring about a negotiated end to the conflict. The White House said U.S. President Joe Biden will be traveling to Poland on Friday to discuss the current situation in Ukraine that has sparked a humanitarian and human rights crisis. The White House added that Biden will hold a bilateral meeting with President Andrzej Duda in the Polish capital, Warsaw. 
Biden's Poland trip will come a day after he meets in Brussels with NATO allies, G7 leaders and European Union leaders. The talks on Iran nuclear deals have stopped and the new complications to revive the Iranian nuclear deal indicate that there might be disagreement between Moscow and Tehran, despite Iran's support to Russia's military operation. Iranian officials have said that the reason for the delay in the talks is the unwillingness of the United States to lift sanctions on Tehran, but some blame it on the Ukrainian conflict, saying that it is delay in talks. International Committee of the Red Cross President Peter Moore, who has been very active since the start of the conflict in Ukraine, is due to go to Moscow today, Tuesday, to discuss the conduct of hostilities and prisoners of conflict in particular. I'm supposed to travel to Moscow tomorrow and uh, hopefully have conversations in Moscow on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, I'm sure I will uh, meet uh, high representatives of the Ministry of Defense and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, that's uh, my objective in order to advance some of the issues on which we have been speaking. Uh, prisoners of war, the deceased, the conduct of hostilities, all the issues coming out directly from our role as a guardian of the Geneva Convention. Aid agencies in Ukraine's Mariupol stated that most attempts to assist civilians stuck in the besieged city have been hampered by the continuous ceasefire violations. Otherwise, reported that 400 schools and 40 hospitals have come and their attack in Ukraine as the situation raises worries about the fate of citizens who run out of food and water. The High Representative of the EU for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josep Borrell, announced that the European Union has approved the constitution of a force of 5,000 combatants and has committed to an increase in its military expenditure in order to be able to carry out interventions on its own by 2025. Certainly a turning point for the European Union as a security provider and very much important step for the European security and defense policy. I think that the adoption of this uh, document sends a strong signal of unity and resolve and it comes at a very, very, very important moment because uh, we certainly need to increase our capacities on security and defense. It's not about creating a European army. The European armies will remain, each member state having its own military army. EU Minister for Foreign Affairs and Minister for Defense Simon Covini attended a meeting of the Foreign Affairs Council in Brussels on March 21st. The foreign ministers discussed the Ukrainian conflict, considered the next steps in the EU's response, and also discussed recent developments in Mali and Ethiopia. The officials debated over the adoption of the EU strategic compass document and especially about European countries' disagreement on oil sanctions. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said in a video address that he had spoken with French President Emmanuel Macron and Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte to coordinate positions. Let's take a listen. I spoke today with the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Mr. Ruto, and the French President, Mr. Emmanuel Macron. We are coordinating our positions on the eve of important summits in Europe, G7 meetings. Leaders of NATO and the European Union will meet on March 24. Our position will certainly be heard. It will be expressed forcefully. Believe me. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby claims that Russia has stepped up its activities in the northern Black Sea to hit Ukraine in what he describes a reaction to a lack of progress by Russian troops on the ground. Let's listen. Uh, that some of the bombardment around Odessa is coming from the sea, from surface combatants. I couldn't tell you exactly what munitions and how many and what they're hitting, but we just see those indications that they have increased their activity uh, in the northern Black Sea. That's not something that we had observed over the last few days. Uh, clearly, we're observing. 
BMP Paribas is stopping all new business in Russia, joining European peers in winding down its local operations after the country's military operation in Ukraine. The Paribas Bank has informed its corporate clients that its local unit will no longer be able to process their transactions from the end of March. The Moscovites are reacting to a Russian court decision to ban the social media giants Facebook and Instagram for extremism, a move taken at a time when Moscow is aiming for total control of online information in the midst of an offensive in Ukraine. I think that everyone wants to use these social networks. So it won't change anything. It might just make someone angry, make someone's life more difficult. It's a useless solution, in my opinion. It shows once again how much they don't care about ordinary people. A Russian judge recognizes jailed Kremlin critique Alexei Navalny guilty of large-scale fraud, paving the way for a new heavy prison sentence against the main opponent of Vladimir Putin. Prosecutors seek to have Navalny sent to a maximum security penal colony for 13 years on charges of fraud and contempt of court. Navalny is already serving a two-and-a-half-year sentence at a prison camp east of Moscow for parole violations related to charges that he says were trumped up to quip him as a political opponent of President Vladimir Putin. After a steep drop, Boeing 737 with 132 passengers crashed on Monday in southern China. The accident caused a fire in the mountains, said, which broadcast on the public television CCTV firefighters headed towards the site of the accident through a mountainous and wooded area. Islam Sid has more. Rescuers, firefighters and police were conducting a nice search operation in the mountains following the accident of Boeing 737. The aircraft with 132 people on board crashed on Monday in southern China after a sudden fall of 8,000 meters. A plane crash that could prove to be the deadliest in the country since 1994. Relief workers faced rain and mud on Tuesday in search for traces of the passengers aboard the plane. The causes of the disaster remain unknown for almost 24 hours. After China Eastern Airlines flight MU5735 pitched to the ground almost vertically, leaving little hope of survival for its passengers. Family members of the 132 passengers have been waiting in a closed area of Canton Airport after the accident. Shanghai-based China Eastern Airlines flight MU5735 had departed from the Kunming metropolis and was destined for Canton. No accurate accounts of the victims were published on Monday evening in Beijing after the disaster that provoked a warm reaction from President Xi Jinping. Upon examination of the accident data, it seemed unlikely that anyone could have survived. In a statement, the airline, China East Airlines, has paid tribute to the dead of the disaster. United States President Joe Biden's nominee to the country's high schools, Kintaji Brown Jackson, has defended her nearly decade-long record as a federal judge as one of the independents and fairness. More in this report by Marwa Belewa. Right Appointed by Joe Biden to the United States Supreme Court, Kenta G. Brown Jackson promises to defend the great American democratic experience if she becomes the first black woman to sit in the influential institution. Members of this committee, if I am confirmed, I commit to you that I will work productively to support and defend the Constitution and this grand experiment of American democracy that has endured over these past 246 years. However, Republicans signaled they would use Jackson's nomination to brand Democrats as a soft on crime. In a confident voice, the 51-year-old judge insisted on her independence and neutrality in introductory remarks before the Senate's Judicial Committee responsible for examining her candidacy broadcast live on American television channels. I have been a judge for nearly a decade now, and I take that responsibility and my duty to be independent very seriously. I decide cases 
from a neutral posture. I evaluate the, the facts and I interpret and apply the law to the facts of the case before me without fear or favor, consistent with my judicial oath. Senator Dick Durbin, the Democratic chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, praised Jackson for her trial-blazing career and warned Republican attacks on her approach to criminal justice were baseless and unfair. Welcome, Judge Jackson, and congratulations to you and your family. Thank you, Senator. This is a momentous occasion, and you have much to be proud of. Jackson wrapped up her opening statement saying that she has dedicated her career to ensuring that the words engraved on the front of the Supreme Court building, equal justice under law, are a reality and not just an ideal. The United States has imposed sanctions on Sudan's Central Reserve Police, accusing it of using excessive force against peaceful protesters, demonstrating against last October's military coup. The U.S. Department of the Treasury said in a statement on Monday that Central Reserve Police, a heavily armed division of Sudan's police force, has been at the forefront of the violent response of Sudanese security forces to peaceful protests in Khartoum. Severe drought risks pushing nearly half of Somali children under five into acute malnutrition this year with hundreds of thousands needing life-saving treatment, according to the United Nations, which called for urgent action. Victor Chinyama, head of communications for the UN Children's Agency UNICEF Somalia Operations, said on Tuesday that malnutrition has reached crisis levels. Spokesperson for the UN Secretary General Stéphane Dujaric spoke in a press briefing about the situation in Western Sahara and said that the UN approach and Mr. Demistura's approach will continue to be based on the relevant Security Council resolutions. Let's listen. We saw the developments over the weekend, the announcement by Spain relating to Morocco and Western Sahara. Uh, for Mr. Di Mastura, uh, the personal envoy of the Secretary General for Western Sahara, he remains in touch with relevant interlocutors. Uh, we, of course, again reiterate the importance of maintaining full commitment to the UN-facilitated political process in line with Security Council Resolution 2602 and other relevant Security Council resolutions. So I think our approach, Mr. Di Mastura's approach, will continue to be based on the relevant Security Council uh, resolution. And finally, in our news, let's have a listen to more international news uh, compiled to us by Miriam Zian. As the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge prepare to visit the former British colony, dozens of prominent Jamaicans, including professors and politicians, are seeking an apology and compensation for slavery. The group is opposing the visit of Prince William and Kate, which is part of a larger trip to the Caribbean region that coincides with the 60th anniversary of Jamaica's independence and the 70th anniversary of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. The group of 100 well-known figures accused the British royal family of perpetuating the greatest human rights tragedy in the history of humankind. Nearly 100 people were injured on Monday in a collision between two trains in the south of the capital, Tunis, around 9.30 local time. Most of the injured suffered from broken bones or bruises. All were in a state of shock, but no serious cases were reported. And the causes of the accident were not immediately known. Tunisian President Kaisa Sayed visited the place of the collision as well as a hospital in the capital, where some of the injured are being taken care of. China has locked down an industrial city of 9 million people overnight and reported more than 4,000 virus cases. The Chinese Ministry of Health announced Tuesday 4,770 new positive cases nationwide. Very low figures in comparison with the other countries in the world, but high for China in its zero-COVID policy. The president of Mexico, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, inaugurated on Monday the first of the major projects of his mandate, a second international airport for Mexico City. Built on a military base 40 kilometers north of the capital, the new Felipe Andalus International Airport expects 2.4 million passengers this year, according to its director. The airport is also expected to relieve the old International Airport of Mexico City, 
long saturated with a record of 50.3 million passengers in 2019. And here's a reminder of today's top stories. Ukraine's president has said that he is prepared to discuss a commitment from Ukraine not to seek NATO membership in exchange for a ceasefire, the withdrawal of Russian troops and a guarantee of Ukraine's security. Ukraine's armed forces and said Russian troops used stun grenades and gunfire to disperse a rally of pro-Ukrainian protesters in the Russian-controlled city of Kherson. U.S. President Joe Biden said that Russia's accusation that Kiev has biological and chemical weapons is an attempt by Vladimir Putin to use those weapons in war with Ukraine. Severe drought risks pushing nearly half of Somali children and the five into acute malnutrition this year with hundreds of thousands needing life-saving treatment, according to the United Nations, which called for urgent action. Well, that's it for me and the rest of the team. The news continues on All24 News. Thanks for keeping it here.